Good evening, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Give it just a few minutes here for people to jump in. Uh, a little update. Three weeks ago, we started a new series, and that new series is called Bold Moves, Faith Outside Your Comfort Zone. And tonight... We are in lesson three of that new series, and lesson three is Tenacious Prayers, Luke 18, 1 through 8. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll give it just a few minutes for people to jump in here, and we'll get started. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if... Uh, Cody will be in with me tonight or not. Uh, he actually just picked his boys up right here about eight minutes ago, headed home, been working all day. Good evening, good evening, Wayne Huska. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Good evening, Tim McDowell. Uh, I know we got Amy Evans in here with us, 351 Cleveland, uh, Half Century Fishing, Catfishing. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. There's Bugman. Welcome, welcome, Bugman. Um, uh, so I was saying, uh, I don't know if Cody will be in here with us tonight or not. He just got off work, picked his boys up here about eight minutes ago and was heading home. He said he had to get him a shower and everything, and we'd go from there. Uh, good evening, El Catfish Grande. Good evening. Thanks for joining us, buddy. But anyway, uh, if anybody would like to join us, uh, the link is in the comments. Uh, anybody's welcome if they would like to join. Uh, again, as I'd said, three weeks ago, we started a new series, Bold Moves, Faith Outside Your Comfort Zone. Tonight, we're on Lesson 3, Tenacious Prayers, Luke 18, 1 through 8. And uh, I'll go ahead and get started and read the introduction for it. Uh, most people don't realize that prayer can be hard work. I'm not talking about a morning routine prayer where you ask God to be with your family as they start their day. Or the prayer you say over your dinner each evening. I'm talking about prayer, prayers that are tied to something you desperately need times when a prayer is all you have and it feels like all the odds are stacked against you it is times like these that our faith is tested and our tenacity is called to take stage front and center it is also so times like these that people are watching which means we have an opportunity to show people who don't know God the power of knowing his son, Jesus. In our story, Jesus uses a parable to teach the disciples the importance of a tenacious prayer, of tenacious prayers. In the parable, we find a poor widow and a corrupt judge. The poor widow is a picture of you and I praying, and the corrupt judge as a picture of God, which is an odd way to depict God, making it a strange combination. Of course, Jesus isn't indicating that God is corrupt. Instead, he is making a point that if boldness can move a corrupt judge to act, imagine how God, who loves us so deeply, will move on our behalf. Good evening, uh, Lizabella, good evening, uh, CVA. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Wayne Huska. Your 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 generosity is just awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, sir. Uh, so <clears throat> that was the introduction. And again, uh, tonight's scripture is Luke 18, 1 through 8. And uh, as this just told us, it talks about 
a poor widow woman and a corrupt judge. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in and, and read the scripture. One day, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly, saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people. But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give you give justice to his chosen people who cry, cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? So that's a pretty interesting story. Uh, the judge pretty much says he don't fear God and he don't like people. We know he's a corrupt judge, but because she was tenacious in her request to him to give her justice, he decided he would give her justice. So it tells me that uh, we should be praying and not ceasing to pray. Uh, we should be taking all things to God in prayer. All right. So <clears throat> I've read the introduction. I've read the story, uh, the Bible verses. I'll go ahead and jump right into the first question. And that first question is, has there ever been a time when you were praying, but because of the prolonged answer, you lost heart? Explain. Well, Please share if any of you have any uh, situations like that that you've had in your life that you prayed for a long time for something and you finally gave up or just lost heart and asking God for it any longer. I can tell you uh, for myself, uh, it wasn't a pleasant time in my life, but uh, my marriage had fell apart. Uh, we were we were different places in our life and uh, my wife and I separated for four years and the whole time we were separated, I was going to church and she was going further and further from God. And uh, the whole time I felt like God was telling me to hang on. I'm going to put everything back together and it's going to be better than it ever was. You know, for a year, that's a long time. For two years, that's a long time. Three years, that's a very, very long time. Four years, it's an extremely long time. Uh, and I'm going to be honest. By the time we got to that point, I done decided I'm done. I'm moving on. I've got to get started back on my life. And that's when everything came together. I'm ashamed to say that that I knew that God had told me he was going to put everything back together. And I know that he's faithful to his word and he was going to do it. But after that length of time, I, I honestly, I gave up. I decided I'd had all I could take and uh, I was ready to move on. But he, you know what? He'd done what he said he was going to do. He put it all back together. He made it better than it ever has been. And uh, things are growing every day. 
uh, right here, this building I'm in right now, we call it the Dream Center. It's all because of my wife and her outreach, helping people with addiction. And uh, she's pretty much devoted her life to it right now. And uh, she is doing so many great things. And God is opening so many doors each and every day for her. Uh, Amy Evans said, uh, I experienced the same in my situation with a loved one's addiction. I prayed 13 years, and there were many times I wanted to give up, lose heart, and walk away. But God moved just like he said he would. I, Amy and Amy Evans, thank God for him being faithful. Uh, CVA said I put my wife through some stuff. <clears throat> we first met, but she kept trying with me. We separated lots of times. Yes, uh, unfortunately, CVA, we do things sometime, and it takes a hard time sometimes for us to see the things we're doing and, and to, to get away from it and get down that right path. Good evening, Catching Them Fish. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Amy Evans says, seemed, <clears throat> seemed as if... The, the more I prayed, the worse things would get. I felt so hopeless and felt despair time and time again. I couldn't leave. Something kept me here and drew me closer to, to the enemy. You know, Amy, you know, the one thing I can say I've learned is that uh, God's got a plan. And God's plan is bigger than ours. And, uh, yeah, you just look at the outcome. I'm so happy for you and Lee. Uh, Lee's a great guy, and he's lucky to have you. You know what? He's lucky to have you, Amy. Uh, and I'm sure now with everything Lee's doing, you feel lucky to have him. So God is good. That's for sure. Uh, Bugman says, I'm a survivor of six-year addict. I'm clean and blessed. God got me clean to be here for my parents. Hey, and that another, another awesome story of God right there and a courageous man right there, bug man, uh, to lay down his life where he was at, move to take care of his parents. He's a great guy. That's all I can say. Bug man is a great guy. And uh, I'm glad his parents, I'm, I'm glad his parents have him. And I'm sure they're thankful for you. Thanks for following God, bug man, and being the man that you are. All right. Well, I'll move on to the next question. <clears throat> and the next one says, what are some reasons you believe Jesus used a judge in the story who didn't fear God or care about people? Oh, I'd have to really think about that. Uh, please share if any of you have any thoughts on that. Uh, I think he wanted to just sh to show that someone who dislikes people did not fear God, so was not a good person, even a bad person. When you're tenacious with your request to him will finally give in and and bless you. So you take someone like God who loves us so much. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. If we're tenacious in our prayers to him, he will bless them. I think it's just uh, he's showing us the extreme there that uh, someone who don't really care about us, but if we're tenacious with, with our request, they'll finally grant them. Lee, uh, Amy Evans says, uh, <clears throat> the hurt is still here, and I fight hard every day to find the peace I know God has for me. I know God isn't finished yet. Many talk about the addict and what they go through, but not the impact it causes. And that's, that's so true, uh, Amy Evans. Uh, right now, 
Uh, so my wife does a recovery class here every Wednesday night. They have, uh, I think right now on this facility right here where we're at right now, this building, they're doing, I think, four meetings a week. They do AA meetings, NA meetings. Uh, I know her her, her uh, recovery meeting that she's having tonight and, uh, and another one. And uh, there's more going on. But I know, like Amy, that's one of the things she has done uh, in her in her meetings, she's asked different people to speak at times. She's even asked the police come and speak so the police could see the change in people, not just see the bad in them. Um, she's asked children of addicts to come and speak so they could tell their story, where they could tell their part and how it affected them. She's asked husbands and wives of addicts to come and speak. And uh, it really helps when everyone gets to hear just how one person's choice affects so many other people. You're very welcome, <coughs> bug man. Uh, the spouse's family has hurt that no one sees and talks about. It's hard and it's constant fight. The bitterness, the anger, <clears throat> the hurt, and the distrust, it doesn't go away. Well, Amy, uh, you know, as a person that's been there, as a person that, that's been there, I understand where you're coming from. Um uh, but for me, I have to let the past be the past, and I have to live for today and tomorrow and the next day. I have to live from, for this day forward because nothing I can ever do can change what happened yesterday. Yesterday's gone. I can't change it. But we can make conscious decisions on what we do here forward. Uh, Bugman said, Amy, my brother was an addict. He died from it. Years of trying to get him to stop. So I've been on both sides of it. I know the hopelessness and the frustration. It's so true. And that's just like me. I'll be honest. When I run around drinking, you know, run around with the good old boys, drinking and everything, I never thought of what I was doing to my children or never thought of what I was doing to my wife, my family. Uh, it wasn't until I quit and my eyes were open to it and, and where God put me in that I seen the choice, what the choices of, that I was making, how they were affecting everyone. And uh, I just thank God for bringing me out of it, setting my feet on that solid rock and uh, giving me something to march forward for. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one. The third one says, <clears throat> the woman asks for justice regarding a dispute with her enemy. Have you ever asked God to help you in a case where you were being mistreated and undermined it by someone? How does this apply to our spiritual enemy? Well, yes, I have. <laughs> I've been there and uh, just spoke on it, and uh, it wasn't ever a good place. It wasn't ever a fun place to be, but uh, I thank God every day for bringing me out of it and uh, loving me enough that uh, He has blessed me so, like He uh, that He has. Uh, and uh, I think that's it's it. You know, in the Bible, it tells us. We do not fight against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle. And that's just it. When someone is on drugs and alcohol, it's a spiritual battle. The The, the devil is having their way with them. And uh, that's the reason I, so, I think it's so important to get someone spiritually connected to God. You know, God can bring us out of so much. All right, Bugman says... 
great job getting clean, man. I know it's very difficult. Yes, it is. And uh, he says, old saying, you can't love addiction <clears throat> away and you can't ang anger it away. One thing to remember is that it is a brain disorder. I never dreamed I'd be an addict after my brother. And that's true. It is. Uh, I, I, I do think uh, a lot in a lot of cases, it's it's a. Uh, Mental health. It's it, mental health has a lot to do with it. And Amy says she's sorry for bug to bug man for his loss and proud of him turning his life around. And we all are. Bug man, oh, I'd like to see everybody turn out like you. Uh, you know, not only turn your life around there, but being willing to lay down your life for your parents and come take care of them. It, it, I know it's big shoes to fill and it's got to be very hard on you. And Amy, I know just where you've been and uh, 13 years, that's a long time. I, I couldn't imagine, but uh, I, I can just look at where y'all are now, uh, what we get to see. And uh, I'm so happy for you. But uh, yes, it's definitely a spiritual battle. I, th I think my, all things in life are just that, a spiritual battle. Uh, with God, all things are possible. That's just it. With God, all things are possible. Eh, I'm going to move on to the next one. And it says, read verses 6 and 7. What do these verses mean to you? What is Jesus trying to teach us? All right. So verses six and seven said this. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he Will he keep putting them off? No, he won't. You know, I guess some cases take longer than others. Like I said, it was four years for me. Amy said it was 13 years for her. Uh, we know the Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, I, I can't explain God's timing and why some things last longer than others. But all I can tell you is he's always there and he's going to bring us through. Uh, Bugman says, I'm going to try to find, uh, knowing I, I, so, and knowing I hurt people, you're right. The family never gets, gets the credit. Their groups, family members look at, uh, look at a site called, uh, in the rooms, video meetings of all kinds. Okay. But the, all right, <clears throat> so it says, read six and seven. I just read, and what is Jesus trying to teach us? Well, I think just just that. Uh, even the unjust, even the unjust, when uh, we're we're tenacious in our request, give us what we want, so or what we need. And I think you're just telling us, you know, God's going to be there. And uh, if we take our prayers to God daily, like we should be doing, and, and then we're tenacious with our prayer requests, that God's going to honor those prayer requests. He's going to bless us. Amy Evans says... If any uncaring, unfit, ungodly judge answers with justice in the end, how much more will a loving God give what is right to his children? Well said, Amy. Well said.
Good evening, good evening, Hand Me Down Outdoors. Thanks for joining us. Glad you're here with us. And I think that's just it, just like you, <clears throat> like you said. <coughs> and this, this talks about the the judge being unjust, and uh, he he did fear God, and he didn't like people. But because she was tenacious in her request for him to give her justice, he did. He gave her justice. All right. Moving right along tonight. So I want to move on to the next question. And the next one is daily routine prayers are important. How does this parable differentiate from routine prayers? Well, I think in our routine prayers, just like it spoke of in the, in the, <clears throat> in the start of this, um, you know, we go, we go to God and we, we ask him to put hedge of safety around us and our family and our friends. And, uh, we ask him to bless our food and bless our, bless us, you know, bless our jobs and whatever. And it's, it's daily routine prayers, but, uh, I think this is bigger things. These are things that we really, really, really need need God to act on, which we need God to act on all of them. But we're really asking for a big blessing. And uh, I think God wants us to be tenacious with those prayers and those requests. Because when we're, one number one thing, I think when we're tenacious with them requests, we have whatever we're asking for on our mind, and we're also we're also working toward those things ourselves. We're not just sitting there expecting God to do all the everything and us to do nothing. I think when we're tenacious in our prayers, we continue daily to have those things on our mind, and we're working toward those things also. Uh, there's Cody in here. Cody said, sorry, just getting here. Work took longer than I expected. 90 degree sun and selling blacktop is for the birds. <laughs> it's <clears throat> it about didn't <laughs> my fat butt in, it about did did my fat butt in today. <laughs> well, Cody, I'm glad you got in, got you a shower. A little hard work is good, good for the soul. <laughs> All right. Uh, if anyone has anything, any uh, thoughts on that, please, uh, please put them in there. Uh, but I, I think that's just it. Uh, if we're keeping it on our mind and it's something that, that, that we're tenacious in prayer with, it's in our mind and we're always working toward it. Persistent prayer reshapes our hearts to God's original design. When it happens, our minds and hearts are cleared to receive God's mercies. There you go. Very good. Very well said, Amy. I agree 100%. Very well said. All right. I'm going to move on to the next one. And the next one says, read 1 Thessalonians 5.17. How does this story help us understand that scripture? Well, I looked up, I looked on here earlier and seen this, so I went ahead and looked up that scripture and we're going to have it ready. Well, that scripture, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 is very short. Never stop praying. That's it. Never stop praying. So, Again, it's being persistent in our prayers. We should never cease to pray. We should always be and go unto the Father. Uh, you know, I know in the Bible it says, uh, you know, if our if our Father here on earth or our, our parents want to give us good things, just think how much more our Father in heaven would want to bless us. And... Uh, 
I believe that with all my heart. So uh, when we have prayer requests, I think we should never, we should pray without ceasing. Exactly. Pray without ceasing. Yes. Never stop praying. Hand me down outdoors says, I find myself praying throughout the day in the moment. Yeah, me too, hand me down outdoors. Uh, you know, I, I can honestly say that uh, I have to do a lot of troubleshooting at work. And uh, usually the first thing I say is, God bless me with the answer to fix this. And, uh, I do. I pray with throughout my day. And I'm going to tell you, I pray over everything. Uh, sometimes when I pray, I think this is a little silly to pray. But you know what? That's what God tells us to do. Come to him with everything. And I do. I, I pray over everything. Cody says, it's why fasting is so important. Our busy lives too often keep us from making time like we should to pray. You're exactly right. And uh, something Cody just said reminded me, you know, <clears throat> our church does a corporate prayer, fasting and praying, at the beginning of every year. We do a 21-day prayer. People give up different things. Some people give up food. Some people just give up their cell phone for 21 days, give up whatever they want to give up. But... Uh, we do a 21 day prayer, prayer, fasting and prayer every year to start our year. And uh, up until this year, I've done that. I've done the 21 days of fast, fasting and prayer. And I've fasted and prayed before. But up until this year, I never had felt like God had called me to fast and pray over something. Until this year, and he did. And he was very specific in telling me to fast and pray for five days for what I was praying about. So I did. Uh, Chris, Chris Steele says it's a good communication to the guiding light. And... Uh, Tim McDowell says, I fail here. When things are good, I struggle to pray more than two or three times a day. You know, Tim, honestly, I think we all probably, when things are going real good, I think we all probably uh, fail there, you, you know. Uh, but like I said, every time I have an issue come up, I find myself praying about it. Uh, I know I can rely on God to give me the answers no matter what they are. Uh, so <clears throat> I even catch myself a lot of times catching myself having thoughts that I know I shouldn't have. <coughs> and uh, when I have those thoughts, I always find myself praying about them. So it's just knowing that God's always there. Knowing that God's always there, no matter what. We know we can pray to him, and he hears us, and he will answer our prayers. You know, sometimes the answer is not what we want it to be. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's not right now. But he will answer those prayers. All right. I'm going to move on to the next one. And the next one uh, says... What is your thought process when God delays answering a prayer? What are some reason he might delay? All right, Tim McDowell, I think uh, that's real common for us. I fail to make time to read the Bible. I really need to work, work on that. All right, so what is your thought process when God delays answering a prayer? And what are some reasons he might delay? Yeah, I'd really like to hear you guys' thoughts on that one because 
I know sometimes he delays answering them because, like I said, it took me – it was four years for, for one prayer for me. And uh, it was hard. It was tough. But I believe that it, it taught me – it taught me to rely on God more and to know that when he says something, he's going to do it. Uh, Chris Steele says, I think I'm asking the wrong question or wording it wrong. You know, Chris, I don't know. I, I think God knows our heart no matter what. Uh, I think no matter what, he knows what we're talking about. and He knows what we need. He even knows what we want. He knows our ever thought. Cody says, uh, I think sometime I bring my troubles on by not praying enough when things are good. It's like he throws a hiccup in my life so that I'll pray more. He will have the relationship with me he craves. You know, Cody, I, that very well could be right. You know, sometimes we need a little mix up. We need something to keep us keep us going down the right path and keep us in, headed in the right direction. When everything's good, you know, I think sometimes we just get lax and uh, – and just don't don't feel like we need things the way we do. Uh, Hammer down outdoors says God sees the big picture. We got to remember He's sovereign, and He is sovereign. That's right. Bugman says He has a plan for us. Our requests may not be in line with His plan. That is true. That is true, Bugman. Tim McDowell says for me. It's to, it's to teach me patience, and he's still working on me or someone else involved. That is true. Uh, Hamidel says God may also be teaching us patience and persistence. When prayers aren't answered the right when prayers aren't answered right away. I, I I can see every – this is some great, great, great interaction. I, I can see everything everybody's saying. It, it, it's awesome. Uh, good evening, Clayton. How are you, buddy? Glad to see you in here with us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Catching Them Fish says, uh, you need to keep your faith through difficult times. Sometimes it takes time to realize the, God's plan. That's true. God's plan is always bigger than ours, better than ours. And, uh, you know, sometimes it takes time to get other things lined up. And when everything lines up and we see the whole picture, we understand things a whole lot more. Uh, Cody says, that's right, hand me down outdoors. Too often we can't see the forest because of the trees. But his view is so much bigger than ours. That's true. Buckman says, the other day I heard a thing about not just praying for your needs and wants, but try just praying thanks for all our, all of our blessings. Pray thanking God even when things are hard. And that, again, truth right there. There's a lot of truth in here tonight, and I love it. it it's awesome. Reading everybody's responses, it, it, it's awesome. Uh Yes, you're exactly right, bug man. We're supposed to love him, praise him, give him glory, no matter what's going on in our life, and praying to him, no matter what's going on in our life. And uh, sometimes he just has to remind us of that. Hand me down outdoors is also trials and tribulations help to mold us into the person God wants us to be. And prayers may not be answered according to his will. Again, all, all great, great, man, the reactions tonight are, are just awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I agree with everything you've said. And uh, that's just it. God's, God's ways are not our ways. God knows 
the best for everything. We do not. He he knows everything. Uh, I couldn't imagine. You know, my little pre, pre bring the little things I know <laughs> is not much, but God knows everything, and he knows best in every situation. Amy Evans says, if he answer, if if his answer is delayed, we need to make sure that our focus is on him. Our motive for asking is God honoring, and we are practicing. Are, Practicing sins that are are habit that are habitual. Uh, yes, exactly. Motive, I think, makes a a big deal in all of it. You know, and I know some of the things I pray for. My motive may not line up with God's, but but my motive sometimes is just to help my family or to help me or to help what I want to do in life. Um, but you know what? No matter whether God answers those prayers or not, I know I'm blessed. He's with me. He's going to take care of me no matter what. Catching them fish says, uh, went through a very hard time for almost four years. I felt completely alone, but I kept my faith. It wasn't until years after my life started to get better again. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I understand that completely, catching them fish. Um, same here. Uh, you know, Four years for me for a, for a prayer to be answered, but I know now that uh, things wouldn't have turned out the way they have had they been answered before that. So it was God's timing, and God's timing was perfect. And all it was very hard on me, but you know what? The whole time I, I was with God, God had put great people in my life, and uh, I had family with me, and. Uh, at the end, he knew best, and, and and now I understand that had it been sooner, things wouldn't have turned out as good as they did. All right. Uh, Catching them fish said, I realize this is why I went through that. Now I know I can face life. Amen. Amen to that, Catching Fish. Catching them fish. Um, Cody says habitual sins is a great topic, Amy. The Bible tells we all have a sinful uh, nature, but that isn't an excuse not to do the right thing. That's a big one there, Cody. Uh, yes, I mean, that's it. We do. We have a sinful nature. And uh, without God, who knows what we'd all be doing, but with God in our life, he keeps us rooted in his word. As long as we stay in his word and follow him, uh, we do the right thing. But without him, we would never do the right thing. No matter how good of a person we think we are, uh, we would do things that were wrong because we do them anyway with, with following Jesus. So, <clears throat> I couldn't imagine, you know, well, I can't imagine. I know what my life was like before I followed, decided to follow Jesus. It wasn't good. Uh, so I thank God for loving us enough to uh, giving us that opportunity to uh, live a, a good, faithful life. I mean, it says it's a topic that could have its own study alone. It is. It is, Amy. That's a 7,000-week study. <laughs> from, from now to the end of time. <laughs> yes, that would be a, a very big Bible study. Uh, 
me see, I'm going to look and see what we have in our archives of some of these lessons uh, to see what we have that we may be able to work work something in here. Let me write that down. Oh. Anyone else have any? All right. I broke me a note here to check that out. Or I may I may just uh, see if I can task my pastor into writing us something up. I could write it myself, but I, I'm not as good at writing this stuff as he is, and that's for sure. So uh, I'm gonna I may task him for writing something up for us. All right. The last question in this one is what tenacious prayer are you engaged in right now? Well, I can tell you guys mine. I feel like sometimes it's really, really selfish. But uh, in it, I'm being totally honest. And I pray that uh, somehow, some way, excuse me, I dropped something. <clears throat> Some way, somehow, that uh, I could make it with three plus one outdoors and make a living with it. Uh, like I said, it's somewhat uh, selfish, but also no, I'm 52 years old. I'm not getting any younger. I'm not getting any younger, and I know. My body is uh, work has took a, a toll on my body over the years. I have a lot of aches and pains, and wake up with new ones every day. And uh, I would just love it to be able to uh, do something that I'm passionate about for a living for the rest of my life. So that's one of my tenacious prayers. Amy says he can take care of all those things that drive sleep from our bodies and peace from our hearts. He's got this. He's got us. And all we need to do is cast all of our worries on him and trust. And then she says, yes, it's hard to let it go. Very true. Very true, Amy. He's got us and he's got our best always is his concern. So he wants what's best for us no matter what. Uh, how long do I have to retire? Uh, probably when I die. Uh, I, honestly, I, uh, I'm probably not going to get to retire anytime soon. Uh, I, my youngest daughter is 16, so she's still got to finish high school, still got to put her through college. So it's a, it's still a, the thoughts of retirement still a ways off for me, hand me outdoor, down outdoors. Uh, Amy Evans says, uh, I've spent so many years spending my time praying for others and wanting to help others. I often find it hard to pray for myself and asking the Lord to fix me and fix my heart. All right. Well, I mean, I too pray every day to help others and uh, pray for God to lead me. I pray that the Holy Spirit lets me know when someone comes into my life that I need to help and, and that I see it and that I react on it and, I, and that the God speaks through me and, and I do the right things. But I also have prayers for myself. And uh, most of the time, those are somewhat, I feel like, selfish no matter what. Uh, it's always better to be helping others. But uh, I do have prayers for myself also. Good evening, Catfish Chris. Thanks for joining us. Um. Buckman says, if we look look at it compared to other places in the world, 
Most of us are blessed more than we need. If you have a roof and some food, you're luckier than the majority of the world. Hey, bug man, you're exactly, exactly right. Uh, what we feel like is poor is rich in most other countries. Uh, most people in other countries would, would die to have what we have. You're exactly right. Um, Amy Evans says, I think we spend so much time focusing on how, how others are and worrying about what they are doing and praying for them, lose sight of what God wants from us as individuals, if that makes sense. No, I, I, it makes all the sense in the world. Um, but I, I have found that, that, number one, when I pray, I want to make sure I always thank God because I have a lot to be thankful for. I always want to ask him to forgive me of the, my sins. And if I've done something that I know I've done, I should ask him specifically to, to forgive that and to help me not do it again. Uh, but I ask him to forgive those sins I, I, that I commit that I don't even realize I commit and, and open my eyes to them. But, uh, and I always pray for him to, to open my eyes to helping others and, and, you know, being, being someone to show the love of Jesus. That's what we're all called to do. Be the apostles and, and show everyone the love of Jesus. I'm not as good at it as my wife right here in the next room. You know, that's what she's doing to these people over here right now is showing them the love of Jesus, showing them no matter what they've done, she still loves them and God loves them. And uh, it, it's big shoes to fill. But I, I do think it's okay for us to pray for things that we want. Uh, I don't think God's just going to say, here, hand, hand you this and, and go on. But I think uh, – he will bless us with ways. You know, sometimes we have to work for those things we want, or most of the time we do. And we should. We should have to work for those things we want. Uh, hand me down says, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, hand me down says, I pray for family that doesn't know Christ yet. Yes. Uh, and we should all be praying for our family, friends, anybody that we know that doesn't know Christ, because we don't want anyone to, to die and uh, and go to hell. We want everyone to be in heaven, to know the love of Jesus. Bugman says, that is the number one thing I always remind myself of. Poor here is only having one car, basic cable. Think about that. That's so true. Uh, I worked with a guy. I got a guy that works under me at work, and uh, he's from uh, Honduras. And uh, we were all sitting one day, and we were having conversations about different cartoons and stuff we watched as a kid. And, you know, he wasn't joining in on the conversation. And so finally – you know, I, I seen he wasn't joining in. I said, uh, I spoke up to him and asked him, you know, hey, what what did you do? What did you watch? And, you know, he told me. He he didn't see a TV until he was 14, 15 years old. He said then it was a little black and white TV he sat. He seen at a store in his town. He, so he said, never, never watched, got to watch any cartoons like we did. He didn't ever have that opportunity. Good evening, Ricky. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Glad to see you here with us. Uh, Bugman says the Bible tells, ask and you will receive if it is in God's plan. Yes, and if it is God, God's will. Uh, again, I think uh, Cody spoke on this uh, in a, one of these a couple weeks ago that God answers our prayers, but sometimes it's no. Uh, so, and God knows best. So there you go. Uh, people from other places will really put things in perspective for us. 
we're so spoiled. Yes, we are. Uh, yeah, I think that's one of the things I thank God for, as messed up as the United States is right now. Uh, I still think it's the greatest, greatest country on earth. And uh, I thank God that, that he blessed me to be born here. Uh, you know, I could have been born anywhere he wanted me to. And he blessed me enough to be born here in the United States. Uh, we are definitely greatly, greatly blessed. I mean, I, I can tell you, I'm, I'm greatly blessed. I'm blessed beyond anything y'all could ever imagine. I have a job I never was deserving of. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have the qualifications for the job. I didn't have schooling for the job, but, uh, God bless my hard work in that plant. Let me move up and uh, place me in a position that I never dreamed I would be in. Uh, <clears throat> and bless not only that, bless me with them paying for me to take cl online classes and everything so I could do the job. So, yes, uh, my life is greatly blessed. I cannot complain about the job that I have. And, and no way. And I thank God for that job because it provides for my family very well. Uh, but yet I, do, I, yet I do pray for other things. Yes. Um, I know every year our, um, our church goes on, usually up until COVID, they were going on two mission trips a year to... Um, Guatemala, Guatemala, and uh, just talking to some of the people, I've never went on one of them, but just talking to some of those people after they came back from Guatemala, and uh, hearing the stories they've told, you know, just little little metal shacks, nothing else but some tin on the walls and whatever they could frame up and dirt floors, houses, and them telling how blessed those people feel like they are. Uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. Cody says, before we wrap things up tonight, I'd like to take the next Wednesday Bible study. We'll most likely be pushed back a week because of being out of town tomorrow on vacation Wi-Fi signal at the beach house. Yes. Uh, so let me go ahead and read these. Uh, I feel very blessed too, way more than I deserve. Yeah, the Wi-Fi signals are never good. Um, <clears throat> Bugman says, I've learned to accept where in life I am. I just tell myself, life is not about what you have or do not have, most important things in life is family. All God wants is us to be as good parents. Yes, and you know, and to to take the things that God we take we should take the things God has blessed us with and bless others. Uh, we got to be good stewards of what we have. Um, what God has blessed we blessed us up we sh blessed us with we should be blessing others. Uh, Ricky says, when praying for ourselves, we know God is going to challenge us or ask us to deal with something that we really don't want to face. Self examination is important. Yes, yes, it is. You're exactly right, and I thank God for that. I thank God for for putting things in perspective for me, things I've never think about. And uh, it sometimes, we, you know, until uh, he opens our eyes, our eyes are just not open to things. Uh, and then Ricky says, uh, like David, we must ask God to examine our hearts and reveal to us the things needed to be changed to draw near to God and to be more effective in his kingdom. There you go. You're exactly right, Ricky. I tell you what, I'm gonna always count on, you can always count on Ricky coming here and, and, and put things in perspective. He, uh, he has a good way of, of always putting things. Thank you, Ricky. Uh, 
hand me down says, yes, I agree, Larry. I went on a mission trip to, uh, I'm not sure how to say that, Mexico, <laughs> uh, Juarez, uh, Mexico, the Juarez, Mexico. I think that's what that is, Juarez, Mexico. I'm not sure. Uh, those people didn't have much, but I tell you what, they had more joy than most people I know. They were so thankful for what little they had. And, you know, that's just heartwarming. Uh, you know, to know that these people don't look at things the way we look at them. We look at things different because of being born here in America and uh, them being born where they are. Uh, they look at their blessings totally different than we do. And it's, it's pretty awesome. And it's very humbling, very humbling. Uh, Bugman said, solo? Yep, I had no idea 15 years ago when my marriage ended that I put me I put me on the course of being able to care for my parents. Yeah, we never know. God always has a plan. God always has a plan. And then like I'll say it again and again. God's plan is always greater than ours. So I'm going to go back to what Cody was saying a while ago. Next week, next Wednesday, we're going to be out of town. Uh, we're going on a family vacation. There you go. Another blessing, another great blessing that uh, we're actually going to be able to go on vacation. Uh, us, our two oldest boys and their family going with us are all going to be there together. And uh, we're going down, going down to uh, Fort Morgan, Alabama for a week. So uh, we probably will not have Wednesday night. But we'll pick up the next week right where we left off. And I just want to thank you guys for all being in here. I love doing this. I'm so glad God laid it on my heart and called me to do this. I'm so glad I get to spend time with all you awesome people, each and every one of you. I love you so much. And you're each one just so awesome and bless my life greatly. Thank you for blessing my life. Uh, Yes, and as Cody's saying right here, drop any prayer requests, please. Uh, anyone has any prayer requests, please drop them down uh, so we can make sure we get those. And uh, Amy Evans says, this is hard for me to even say, but please remember me in prayer and my family. Yes. Writing it down right now, Amy Evans. And that's what I'm here for. Don't ever hesitate to ask me for prayer. Any of you can hit me up on Facebook on 3 Plus 1 Outdoors Messenger. Or you can send me an email at 3 Plus 1 Outdoors at gmail.com. And I'm glad to, uh, glad, glad, glad to pray for you, play, pray with you, pray for whatever you need. Um. Uh, Chris Steele said, I, I had a phone call, and I'm sorry that I missed a lot of uh, your show, but I got prayer request. I'm going to have surgery on Monday. It's a routine surgery, but I would love for everybody to pray for me if you don't care. Yes, sir, Chris. And I know what Chris is having surgery on. So, guys don't care. Uh, add Chris to your prayer request and uh, our prayer list. And uh, again, as he just said, he's going to be having uh, surgery on on Monday. Amy says, I need to find peace that I know God has for me. Yes, he does. Cody says, prayer for uh, safe travels to everyone going to the meet and greet. And us on the way to Gulf Shores. Yes. And uh, if anybody's going to be at the meet and greet at the gathering uh, down in uh, Chattanooga, I look forward to meeting you. If you're going to be there on Saturday, I'm going to go. Uh, Amy and I are going to pack up, and we're going to go down to there. 
And uh, we're going to leave from there Saturday evening and head to Gulf Shores. But we're going to go down to and spend some time uh, meeting everyone that's going to be there at the meet and greet on Saturday. Bugman says, Amy, you and Lee are blessings to me. You have no idea. Well, you more than Lee. Sometimes he can be grouchy. <laughs> All right. Amy Evans says, uh, remember YouTuber uh, Suska, Suskahanna Stan and another YouTuber that has great need. He may not want his name mentioned. Yes, I know uh, Susquehanna Stan is battling cancer. Uh, I think it was a kidney that he had removed because of the cancer. So uh, everyone, please just continue to remember him in your prayer. And you, and you said there was another YouTuber. All right. All right. Ricky says, Bugman, the best thing I can recommend is to start an action plan and praying and reading the word first thing in the morning. Make the attempt and God will meet you more than halfway. Well, I'm going to tell you guys. And I'll add anybody to it that wants to. Uh, right now, I'm in two different groups that we do a daily devotional. We take the script, the daily scripture out of the Bible app, and we do, it's called the SOAP method, which is the S is scripture, O is for observation, A is for application, and the P is prayer. And that blesses my life so much, kind of what Ricky was just saying. So I take that scripture and I read it. And then I write down my observation from that scripture. And then I write down an application for that scripture and then a prayer for that scripture. It's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, if anybody that's not in that would like to be in it right now, uh, I've got two different groups that I'm in doing the same thing. And uh, we just send a... Uh, a group message through Messenger, and anybody that wants to share what they wrote down each day can just take a photo of what they wrote down and send it out for everybody to read. All right. Uh, Susquehanna Stan's wife, Turtle Lady, is having back surgery soon. Sorry, I don't remember her actual name but the Lord knows. Yes. And yes, bug man, that's a lot for one, uh, one family. All right. So turtle lady. Back surgery. All right. Well, <clears throat> if no one else has any prayer requests, I'm going to pray over the ones I have here. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to pray us out if you guys don't care. If you don't care, just bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you tonight, Lord, and just thank you for your many blessings. Just thank you for the opportunity, Lord, uh, to come together with all these wonderful great people, these great brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. Lord, it just blesses my life, Lord, to do this each and every Wednesday night. Lord, uh, each and every one of these people are a blessing to my life, and I thank you for them. I ask you, Lord, to put a hedge of safety around each and every one of them. And Lord, just be the guiding light beneath their feet. I'm lifting up Amy Evans and her family as she is asked for prayers. I'm lifting up Chris Steele to you, Lord, as he's going to go through surgery on Monday, Lord. I just ask you to be with him. Lord, just comfort him. Let his recovery be remarkably quick, Lord. And uh, Lord, just be with the surgeons as they do the surgery. Father, I lift up uh, Sask Sask Susquehanna Stan, Lord, and uh, his wife, Turtle Lady. Uh, I know Stan just had surgery for cancer and is battling cancer, Lord. 
You know his needs better than I do, Lord, and I'm just asking you to fulfill those needs, Lord, to give him what he needs to be healed, Lord, and Lord, just let him know that and comfort him. Let him know that you're with him, and his wife's getting ready to have uh, back surgery, Lord. I just ask you to be with the doctors. Uh, Lord, I just gab those surgeons, Lord. Heal her, whatever she needs, Lord. Give it to her. Comfort them. Comfort their loved ones, Lord, that are going to be caring for them and that are, are, are going through this with them, Lord. And uh, there's another YouTuber, Lord. I don't know who he is, Lord, but you know who he is or her or she is. I don't know which one it is, Lord, but uh, just lift them up to you in prayer, Lord. And just ask you to bless them with all their needs being met, Lord. And, Lord, as we, we pray, Lord, we pray for our families and our friends, Lord, our, our church families, our, just our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. We just thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for us, all your many blessings. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, uh, the devotionals. Uh, what's up, Big Mike? Thanks for joining us, buddy. Um, if you want one of the devotional books, Bugman, uh, just send me your address and I'll get you one sent out. I'll send one out to you. And that goes for anyone else. Uh, I don't have mine with me right now, but it's pretty much just a little devotional book. Uh, it's a little leather back. There's one my wife has sitting here. But uh, anyway, it's a little devotional book. You can write your devotional in every day. Uh, anybody that would like one and would like to be a part of it, the devotional, just send me your address. Uh, send it to me at three plus one uh, outdoors on messenger or again on three plus one outdoors at gmail.com and I'll get you one sent out to you. But uh, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. God bless each and every one of you. I love you and thank you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And as we always say, it's God family and the great outdoors. God bless and thanks for joining us.